Yeah, I, I traditionally do um, come out to everyone, and there are so many ways I can come out. You know, I'm professionally gay. I'm personally gay. I'm I'm pretty uber gay. Uh, and I actually enjoy that because I think a lot of people look at me and, you know, if they don't know me at all, may assume that I'm straight. And I sort of like challenging their assumptions and saying, actually, I'm not. And I have a girlfriend and I, you know, run a LGBT organization and, you know, am an activist <laughs> for other LGBT people. So. I either talk about my job, talk about my girlfriend, talk about being a big lesbian, um, you know, all of those. And I really, um, you know, it's, it's usually not even something I think about. Uh, but when I was first coming out, it took me a long time to tell my girlfriends from high school, like my friends who are girls. And I think it was exactly what you were talking about. It was about uh, really letting go of, of the stories that we create for ourselves. You know, and I was the homecoming queen, I was the prom queen, and you know, student council, and class secretary, and all of these things. And um, I didn't realize how much that narrative was sort of influencing me and, and created my image of myself. And I think telling them was, it felt really scary, because it really felt like shattering everything they thought about me and saying that I was something different. And I worried that they wouldn't accept me. Um, and I had a generally, you know, I didn't have an experience where people weren't, you know, stopped talking to me or anything. And I was worried that they might, and I think I was more worried about, you know, um, I think it was my own internal homophobia and hesitation uh, sort of projected on them that I was worried they would uh, look down on me. And when I did come out to them, it was, you know, as soon as it stopped being an issue for me, it was, it wasn't an issue for them. <laughs> like as soon as I got comfortable really being who I was, I've noticed that all of them are, are fine and accepting and embracing and it's not an issue. Um, so that's been really great. There's certainly an overlap in terms of issues. Um, women face a lot of pressure around gender expression and um, certainly get punished if they step out of line, whether they're straight, gay, bisexual, um, transgender, you know, com gender normative. Um, there, there's a certain pressure on women to really fit certain molds and be very clear about our gender and our sexuality. And so I see a lot of overlapping issues. I wish there was more overlap between the movements themselves. Uh, sadly, I think it's pretty siloed. There might be some gay or bisexual or queer women working in the women's movement, not necessarily on those issues. Um, there might be, you know, and there are straight women who work in the LGBT movement, and I don't see the, the you know, feminism brought into that as much. So uh, at the center, we actually had a program called Causes in Common, which built bridges between the reproductive justice movement and the um, LGBT rights movement. And it was really exciting. And it was, it was a rare moment where there was an overlap and there was a conversation about, we've got common enemies these the legislation and issues, they impact us both. When we're talking about health care and reproductive rights and access, this really impacts LGBT people if they're trying to build a family, um, you know. And, and so I, w I wish there was more collaboration.